Um, we are the Shannon Consortium. We've been together for the last almost nine years. We have a very uh, long-standing working relationship. We have a lot of successes in terms of uh, shared policies, MOUs, uh, shared procurement, shared services. So this uh, type A cluster-based proposal was really music to our ears. We were delighted that it would allow us to bring together and go for it in terms of a big, big bang campaign. Um, just to give you the profile in terms of enrolments, you can see that we have over 23,000 students combined uh, with UL, our lead uh, partner, uh, with the majority there in terms of having over 14,000 enrolments. The other timely component of Type A, of course, is that University of Limerick and Mary Immaculate College are two of the four partners on the All Aboard project funded by the National Forum. So it is an efficiency, really, for us uh, to use this as the basis, as our framework. We're using it as a diagnostic, but we're equally using it as a framework for um, anything that comes out of uh, the, the project. So the All Aboard framework has six superordinate categories, and along the lines because this is a travel metaphor, remember. Um, there are stations, and ultimately there will be journey cards. But in any case, we're using it as a diagnostic to start with uh, on two levels, a diagnostic for the needs, but also a diagnostic for the capacities and skills that already exist and can be used in a peer-to-peer -peer, um, way. So I'll get straight to the what we will do, and that's very linked with how we will do it, okay? So that there, it's hard to talk about one without talking about the other, and equally about the who will do it, okay? So forgive me for going between the two. So the first step, if I could keep the step metaphor going here, is uh, this stage of taking the framework and using it as a diagnostic. Okay, go on, leveraging a campaign, getting people to buy into the idea of taking one step. It's just one step. What skill would you like to learn by March? So you might go on the, uh, on the teach and learn line and say, I would really learn, I'd like to learn how to use mind mapping software. I'd love to know how to do that. Or I might go on and say, you know, I'd love to, to be able to, to write a blog. So it's to take one small step and get, it, get that skill by March. That diagnostic will tell us, give us a good picture of the profile of need, and that will drive then our innovation uh, fund campaign. So our innovation fund campaign will say, uh, these are the needs. Have you got skills? Uh, have you got uh, something you could bring to this? And we will, we will fund you if you can do that. So these two parallel uh, processes will feed into our tell roadshow. Now it's Tell Week, and we decided to be creative with Tell Week. Tell Week for us is a process. Tell Week will happen over five days. That's five, that's a working week, but those five days will be between February and March. And there's good reason for that. We have long-standing practice of structures within our consortium that move around our six campuses. So we feel that gathering momentum over those five days, making it a work in progress, so uh, the staff and students who are part of our innovation fund will be showcasing, this is what I got funding for, this is where I'm at with it, this is what I'm doing. Um, those who signed up to learn a skill, they can gain that skill at this workshop. They might gain that skill from a student, they might gain it from a staff member. So there'll be a lot going on, but we felt it's better value for money to spread those five days out and make it part of a process. So we've been creative in the use of the week. Um, so a lot will come out of the process in terms of um, OERs and as well interesting case studies that we hope to capture. It's going to involve a lot of promotion. We're hoping to use um, our existing structures around CPD that we already promote, but also uh, to really uh, leverage uh, social media as a, a part of our campaign, but also as part of our means. So Facebook will be an important part. Um, putting things up on YouTube and having them on our Facebook site, engaging students in that way, uh, and staff obviously, will be important. I should clarify the cohorts. We're talking about staff and students. We're talking about novice and expert users within both of those cohorts. There are needs and there are capacities 
so they can both feed off each other. Equally, we also have guaranteed participants within, our, with cert, within certain embedded modules. So that's also an important uh, part of the process. Then there's the wider student body, and that's really, we, we really want to see how we can engage the wider student community. What will the impact be for that wider student, student community? So who's going to be doing this? Well, everyone really, but it's going to be driven by our existing structures. And here we are. This is us, the TEL unit at UL, the department. Here is the department of flexible learning in LIT, and we are the blended learning unit in Mary Mackley College. So we're going to be driving it, but really everybody's going to be feeding into it. Uh, you can see our Gantt chart. We have an engineer here, so we, have, we always work on Gantt charts. Um, you can see that... Uh, Obviously, there's the design phase, the launch promotion. Promotion is going to be ongoing. Um, there's going to be use of resources that are already there. We're linking into the, the existing resources being built by the All Aboard, as well as building what we need. And we're using the design process and templates that, that will be provided by the, the existing uh, national project. The Innovation Fund will be a really important part of mobilizing and engaging everyone. Um, we've based that on existing practice and we know it works. Um, and I think we're ready to go uh, in terms of the innovation fund, but we will be very much informed by the needs analysis stage and the skills audit. So then the tell roach, as you can see, will happen between February and March. Uh, one of them will actually coincide with um, LIT's staff development day, uh, so we can lock the doors. And <laughs> no, we have, so we're, we're building as much as we can on our existing structures. We have an ongoing conversations in the consortium professional development series, and we, ha we have had a, long, um, a, a lot of national forum funding for our uh, seminars on blended learning as well. So we, we, we're used to running these things. Um, and then, of course, the important stage of evaluation, which I'll talk about. Uh, in a minute. Oh, of course, <clears throat> lest you miss it, it's, it's very grassroots. <laughs> so it's grassroots in terms of need, and it's grassroots in terms of what skills we, do we have? Everybody here, students, staff, what can we bring? How can we all work together? How are we going to promote it? Well, hashtag T1Step. It's already live, it's out there. Thanks for the retweets. Um, <laughs> Social media is a big part of it, um, but you know there are many stakeholders. Librarians, they're already doing so much in this space, and they're they're going to work with us. Um, we have our existing CPD structures that we've mentioned. Social media, as I mentioned, the peer-to-peer -peer factor is is very important. The student union are very important to us, and they they all they work together across the consortium, so they have a, an ongoing relationship in running all of their different events. Student ambassadors are going to be part of the process. Badging, for those who are interested. So we're interested in, in the potential of micro-credentialing as part of the incentive as well. The Innovation Fund, as I mentioned. The Innovation Showcases and Awards as incentives as well. And you can see there we've used the Venn diagram. So we're talking about the faculty, expert and novice users. We're talking about students expert and novice users. And then there's that um, overlapping um, in the diagram where students and faculties, uh, faculty members are working together anyway in embedded modules and programs. So I guess what this slide is saying is that there are many means to promoting uh, what we're doing. And um, social media is going to be an important part of it, but so, so is everything else. So bringing all of all of the different possibilities together. And um, we're going to have to differentiate it to different cohorts. So we're, we're aware of the, the different cohorts and how we need to uh, tailor the campaign, perhaps in a differentiated way, as well as having a concerted approach. In terms of how we will uh, evaluate it, um, we're very conscious that the evaluation process will be a formative one. We want to find out what works. If you invest this money, what has worked? That's really important. If you're trying to have a big impact in a very short space of time, and like we've dragged it the week, the concept of the week, but we want to see if you take this approach, is it working? Will it work? What worked? Who did it work for? So 
That will entail gathering pre and post data, obviously, through survey and focus groups, as you'd expect. A pre-audit of, of our resources and our skills and capacities. Obviously, we've access to a lot of data analytics and tracking in the normal way. Um, we can count how many people turned up for events. That, that's useful. Um, but also, social media, I suppose, allows you uh, to look at participation in, in, in a very um, different way, in a virtual way. And that's going to be the really exciting space for us, using uh, Facebook in particular um, as an important engagement site. Um, when we finish, we'll be auditing what we have now that we didn't have at the start in terms of OERs. We'll be looking at all of the other post data. And I guess it's important to say that impact can be quantitative, but it's important to have a qualitative approach as well. And um, we like the idea of having impact case studies at the end of this, that we will have people, you know, staff and students who say, like, I, in, I got funding for this, or I engaged in this, and this is the impact it had for me. Now, it could be June or after before people can actually reflect on where, what the impact was, but that's actually another important part for us. And um, that's the end of our presentation, and um, I'm going to join my uh, colleagues here, and uh, we'd be happy to take your questions.